So I wasn't expecting to make this video so soon, but eh, here we are. Since Persona 6 is a topic that's going on right now, I kind of want to talk about some ideas or just desires I want in the next Persona game. So sorry if this video is a bit shorter and slash a bit more rambly, but here we go. Also, I'm sorry for no gameplay. It's whatever. So number one, not gonna lie, I kind of want to teach a main character. I think it would be way more interesting to have a transfer teacher that teaches abroad. Because <clears throat> that hasn't been done in Persona yet. Because it's always been a transfer student of some kind, uh, in some way, shape, or form. So, um, I think a teacher would go a long way at, honestly. Uh, the way that it could work, because I know that uh, in 3, 4, and 5... The teachers ask you a question or ask your party member a question and there's tests what they could do with that instead is the students ask you a question you have to give the right answer so that they understand it if you give the wrong answer then one of the other students will pipe up with saying uh that's actually incorrect it's this and for test week it could be something along the lines of you're actually creating the test or uh you're making sure that the class isn't cheating something like that could be interesting it's something new uh, the second thing I would like, I like in Persona 3 how some of the characters have already awoken to their persona, right? So, I want some of the main characters, at the very least party-wise, to have already awoken to their persona. I think it could be really interesting because that means that the world has already existed. It's just brand new to you, but not brand new to those characters. The third thing... I would like the party members to interact more often in one-on-one -on -one scenarios. What I mean is, take for instance from Persona 5, Ryuji and Yusuke. Those two interacting one-on-one -on -one with together, or one-on-one -on -one together, by themselves without Akira present. Akira Kurusu. I.e. Joker. You know, stuff like that. Because it would mean that uh, Joker isn't the glue that holds them all together. They interact by themselves, which would be nice. Uh, the fourth thing I would like, again, harking back to Persona 3, party members' of per uh, personas evolve in the main game without needing to do the social link. I'm a huge fan of how they did that in Persona 3, where during pivotal moments in the story, your party members' personas evolved. I don't like that the evolution is locked behind a social link, because you, you can get the uh, evolution as early as you can. And that's kind of busted a little bit. And some people aren't into that. I don't know. I think it would be more interesting uh, to have the personas evolve in the story rather than during a social link. And to coincide with that, the main protagonist persona evolves in the main game without needing to do New Game Plus to get it. What I mean by that is, again, harking back to Persona 3, Persona 3 did a lot of things right that 4 and 5 kind of just fell flat on its face, huh? Anyway... Uh, in Persona 3, you are able to obtain Messiah, which is the ultimate form of uh, Minato's Persona. I would like something similar to happen for Persona 6, where instead of only obtaining the ability to make uh, the ultimate Persona for the protagonist you in New Game Plus, you can get the ultimate Persona in straight up the main game. Maybe have it be second to last dungeon or something. I don't know. But that would be nice. Because New Game Plus is just a waste of time unless if you uh, actively want to fight the Velvet Room attendee. Which uh, I don't think is any kind of achievement, sadly. So what's the point? Just to fight a hard challenge? Whatever. Uh, number six is kind of tied to Persona Q, honestly. Sub-Persona for the main protagonist, so we can still use the one we awoke to. I like Orpheus. I like Izanagi. I like Arsene. What I don't like is that we have to fuse them away and never see them again unless if we specifically actively use them throughout the entire main game. I would like to have the main persona be non-fusable with other personas so we can actually keep him as a main persona. Which is why we have a sub-persona. Because in Persona Q, for those unaware, you have... Every single party member, including Minato and you, and also uh, Akira in PQ2, uh, the main protagonists and all the party members have their main default persona, but they also have a sub-persona they can use in tandem with their main persona. 
I think that could go a long way, but only for the main protagonist. Because uh, only the main protagonist should have the wild card, in my honest opinion. Uh, this is something that Persona 3 and 4, Golden specifically, did. In-game outfits be obtainable in the game proper and not be DLC. I don't like outfit DLC. I'm okay with it if it's, like, fan service -y stuff, as in, like, um, SMT4 Samurai outfit, you know, or Catherine outfit, you know, stuff like that. But when it's the in-game outfits that the characters wear in the game cutscenes, that shit should be obtainable within the game proper, not based on DLC. Hate it. Um, do what Golden did and have a store that sells outfits or something, you know? That could be cool. Uh, this is another SMT thing, uh, specifically 4, because I don't know if all of the other uh, SMT games do this. I know uh, 5 uh, retraced their steps, and I hated it for it, but all Kaja and Unda abilities become multi-target instead of single target. Also, having a Luster Candy and Debilitate-like ability. What I mean by that is, Taru Kaja in Persona 5, as an example, is single target. Meanwhile, in SMT4, it's multi-target. Same thing with Tarunda, where it's multi-target. Tarukaja being buffing uh, allies' attack by one stage, and Unda being uh, decreasing by one stage. I'm fine with them keeping it only being one stage instead of the plus three, but I would like the Kaja and Unda abilities to just be multi-target flat out right from the get-go. None of these Ma Kaja or Ma Unda skills. And then uh, Luster Candy and Debility would obviously be... Uh, Multi-target, attack, defense, and hit rate slash evasion, or uh, lowering that by a stage. That I would greatly prefer rather than Ma. Uh, number nine is Shovel Time or something similar. I get that Persona 5 was trying to retrace old steps with uh, 1 and 2, I think, where there's Persona Negotiation, where it was similar to SMT with Demon Negotiation. However, I like Shuffle Time a little bit more, and I like fighting actual shadows instead of Personas, but that's just me. So, I say Shuffle Time or something similar because I know some people might aren't a fan of how Shuffle Time was handled in Fez because it's random. Uh, especially if uh, you're bad at guessing which card is which, but hence why I said something similar. I don't know what they could do to make it work, but... I would like that to be a thing, to be honest. And finally, and most importantly, and what people have been begging for, more adult main cast. Specifically, party members and social links. Ideally, since the main protagonist is the teacher, the class will all be third-year students, i.e. all of the characters will at the very least be 18+. This has been something that has been requested for ages. And don't get me wrong, I understand why the main cast are always teenagers, because that's the main demographic per, uh, for Persona. Whereas SMT, where, as the SMT series is more akin to, you know, adults. Because in Japan, at the very least, if memory serves, the best uh, time uh, any Japanese person goes through is their high school life. So it kind of harkens back to, oh, this is like my high school life, or something similar to that. And I do understand it, but we would like some more adult main party members. Because, hell, hey, Persona 2 did it, at the very least, in Eternal Sin, I believe. Right? Eternal Sin? Or, no, e Eternal Punishment. My bad. <laughs> so, I do think an adult main cast would go a long way and actively help the game. And plus, it would uh, get rid of the annoying idiots who go, I'm tired of playing as these... Uh, teenagers and stop looting these teenagers and all this other just like shut up please okay like in a few years time because if you didn't know this and if you don't pay attention enough every single persona game is based on the real world as in the time it takes place or every persona game takes place during the time it gets released the only reason why persona 5 isn't that same is because it was released in japan in 2016 but for Everywhere else, it was 2017, and plus I'm almost positive that Atlas didn't know when it was going to release because it kept getting pushed back and back and back and back. I know they could have updated it, but they would have to change a lot, so yeah. 
I do think uh, in adult main cast, or at the very least, all of the main characters are 18 plus would go a long way. That's just me. But yeah. Anyway, those are 10 things I greatly desire for the next Persona game. What about you? Let me know. I'll see you later.